Yeah. Yes, uh, Dev. Please go ahead and pray. I think the others will join us soon. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Father, we come before you and we thank you for this wonderful new day that you have given us, Lord Jesus. We, we are thankful that you have been so wonderful, so gracious, and you have always been so faithful to us, Lord Jesus, no matter how we are, no matter how we behave, Lord Jesus. But your love and your faithfulness always towards us, Lord Jesus. And we thank you and we specially pray this day as we uh, as we go for our classes, Lord Jesus. And let our hearts be prepared, Lord Jesus, so that we can receive your word, Lord Jesus. Let our hearts be as a um, good land so that you can bear much fruit, Lord Jesus. We thank you. I pray that your anointing be with Nancy Ma'am, Lord Jesus, and let your anointing be with all the students, those who are still yet to join, Lord Jesus. Help them to join faster and in time, Lord Jesus, and let each one of us come to him and understand everything that our pastor is teaching today. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Dev. Yeah, so just give me a moment. There's like a lot of light in my room. Let us see if I can adjust the light. Yeah, muted. Oh, 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 sorry. No, yeah. Um, no, I was saying I, I'm not able to do much about the light, so we'll just go ahead. And we were in Acts chapter 13, uh, and we saw how. Uh, as the leaders in the church of Antioch were praying, God told them to uh, separate for him Paul and Barnabas for the ministry for which he had called them. Uh, and then, you know, the, the church obeyed what the Holy Spirit uh, spoke to them and uh, allowed Paul and Barnabas to uh, move in that specific direction. So, you know, we saw that Paul and Barnabas, they chose John Mark from Jerusalem. Uh, they chose him as their assistant and they went on this missionary journey. And this is um, known as Paul's first missionary journey, uh, basically preaching the gospel, planting churches, uh, you know, through the region. And this is very much in line with what the Holy Spirit had spoken earlier uh, in Acts 1. 1, 8, uh, actually Jesus, uh, he had said, you shall receive power when, <laughs> excuse me, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in all, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So the uh, gospel will spread from Jerusalem to other parts of the world. So that's what we are going to see happen starting from Acts chapter 13. Now that, uh, the journey has started. We saw that they start traveling. You know, they uh, stop at a couple of places, and um, you know, finally, they come to. Uh, okay, I'll tell you, Cyprus, Salamis. Okay, and then they came to the island of Paphos. And in the island of Paphos, we saw how there was a proconsul or one of the uh, officials who wanted to know about Jesus. He was very interested, but there was a spiritual barrier. And the spiritual barrier was created by a, a sorcerer. So we know that the demonic powers can interfere you know, with the receiving of the gospel. So uh, we have to pray against the demonic powers uh, and even as we do that you know god's uh, uh, that understanding of the gospel gospel will become clearer for the people so here is a very clear example of a demonic interference so uh, uh, paul understands that and then you know in this situation uh, paul had to rebuke this sorcerer by the name of Bar Jesus or Elimus. So he had to rebuke this uh, person. And we know that uh, it was like the judgment, okay, that uh, um, earlier also we've seen in the book of Acts, when the grace of God, when the power of God is abundant, we also see, uh, you know, God 
God's judgment coming through in a very strict way. So he rebukes this sorcerer and he says something like, you know, you are going you shall be blind not seeing the sun for a time so that was the uh judgment which was pronounced and you know it took place so this person he could not walk he had somebody to lead him but when the demonic power was dealt with uh we see that the proconsul he heard and uh you know he believed Okay, so uh, this is a good example of you know spiritual warfare over the lives of individuals. So uh, why sometimes people are not receiving the gospel? There can be a demonic interference. So we must come in prayer. We must come in uh, faith to break that, and then we can actually see uh, an openness. Okay? And we know when we've uh, read about revivals. visitations moves of god how communities of people gathered together and they prayed over an entire region what happens you know we've talked about territorial spirits okay, this is uh, at a, um, a different level so we in, we uh, go against these uh, opposing spirits and that entire region is kind of opened up for the uh, gospel um, actually more of the understanding of the gospel in the hearts of the people and they are able to receive so in that manner uh, we find here in paphos okay god's power being demonstrated and a leader an influential person receives the gospel now what else happened in paphos we don't read uh, here but it is understood that if there is an influential person who has accepted the gospel what will happen you no know, uh, he probably would have uh, gone ahead and shared it with others he would have had good opportunities to minister to people and bring many more people to christ so that is uh, the uh, progression of events that could have taken place now after Cy Cy um, cyprus Salamis, okay, these places we've seen, Paphos. So you can imagine, you know, it's like uh, when you see the metro, uh, uh, you know, the metro uh, track. You see points, right, where you can change your track. Okay, you can move from the blue line to the green line. So you see those dots. These are the stations. So you can kind of look at the uh, missionary journey like that. So you have these places, you know, Cyprus, Salamis. Through that he goes. He makes a stop at Paphos. There he ministers to the proconsul, uh, Sergius Paulus. and one more beautiful thing is he's an intelligent man so sometimes people wonder uh, is the gospel uh, for the poor and needy and those who lack understanding not you you see here that there was an intelligent man who was interested in the uh, gospel of the lord jesus christ okay so how is it that people come to this conclusion that only those who are in need of food or in need of money or in need of you know some material blessing they accept christ so that they have a better life you know maybe uh, you know as paul and uh, peter and john said silver and gold we don't have but some people perceive that oh look at the church you know the church again a very general term when people use that term the church is well to do and so if we connect to the church maybe they will give us food they will give us you know facilities to uh, help us with a better living and that is the reason people accept christ but look at this passage you know uh, sergius paulus is an intelligent man he's an intelligent man and yet he is interested in the gospel once the demonic power okay uh, and in this case you know we we said that the demonic influence can be at various levels now we have an individual who is uh, uh, who has become a source of a uh, demonic influence in that region of paphos okay we we've seen others like simon the sorcerer who was an influence in where he was an influence in samaria out of his uh, black magic and witchcraft and sorcery and things like that so uh, satan can also it's not just possession it's like empowerment so there can be individuals in regions who are empowered in that way and through their hindrance 
an intelligent man was not able to receive the gospel but once the power of god was demonstrated and this person was uh, you know his influence was taken off of uh, sergius paulus he accepted christ so we saw that impact made on paphos then we continued i notice you know verse 13 it says now paul and his party sail set sail from paphos okay very interesting isn't it till now paul is not at all in the fore he is one of the apostles you now he is uh, um, a learned person a good teacher obviously which is why barnabas needed his help and brought him to antioch but now suddenly paul has got that uh, limelight the team is no longer called barnabas and paul it's called paul and barnabas you know some people say that barnabas is like a mentor to paul now if you know that is the case uh, yeah it's true barnabas really invested in paul's life and barnabas uh, brought paul he searched for him and he brought him to the church of antioch now you just think how would barnabas have felt when the team luke is calling the team as paul and party you know in kingdom builders we study about this fathers and mothers in the house of god a true father will be proud that oh wow you know somebody that i have worked with somebody that i have uh, uh, guided they have now become a prominent person for the kingdom of god for the glory of god so we don't see barnabas trying to fight this title you no know, paul and party uh, so now barnabas is not in the picture paul is in the picture okay so it kind of shows that healthy mentoring relationship where barnabas is not taking offense uh, from paul receiving the recognition so they they are traveling again so now they come to perga in the region of pamphylia and that's where john mark departed and i told you about john mark going away now uh, i gave you some reasons for john mark going away but some people also say that maybe you know john mark was upset that now the team is called paul and party because uh, apparently uh, john mark is also a relative of barnabas so we don't know if barnabas was mature enough to handle uh, paul getting all the attention but john mark may have been little upset that suddenly paul is uh, taking charge of the entire uh, mission trip so yeah anyway he departed and so we see from pamphylia they go to pisidia okay and i told us that there were many antiochs uh, and this particular antioch is in pisidia and over there they start preaching the gospel and we see how paul actually preaches he says he talks about um david and he talks about the references in uh, uh, the psalms that say that uh, you know the the um, that david is saying that he will not see decay okay but then uh, obviously david died so who is this person that david was actually referring to and paul brings the attention of the people and shows them that david was talking about the lord jesus christ and that they should trust in the lord jesus christ because he is our savior that he is our um, lord that you know he is the one uh, who is our redeemer uh, so uh, he brings the attention to the lord jesus christ and when people hear this uh, the jews hear it and they are very happy so uh, at the at the first instance it seems like you know they they were kind of open to listening to what is being taught in the synagogue so in verse 42 uh, we see so when the jews went out of the synagogue the gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next sabbath and there were some gentiles you know who were also interested in god uh, in the god of the jews so they too would kind of come to worship there now these gentiles they wanted the same preaching to be uh, shared with them now one more thing we can notice is you see when you read the sermon of paul it sounds very much like the sermon of peter 
So, uh, remember early on we said that the believers were committed to the apostles' doctrine. You know, the way people trusted in the word of God, they committed themselves to the word of God was amazing. It's like maybe over a decade since Peter preached his first sermon. But Paul is preaching the same doctrine. Okay, there's no error. Uh, so today in the mentoring hour, there was a question about the end times. How do we stay strong in the end times? How do we uh, not depart from the faith in the end times? And, you know, uh, different points were shared. One of the things that pastor shared towards the end is he said, don't be given to strange doctrines. We are warned about strange doctrines, right? That we should not uh, sway towards all kinds of teachings that are coming, but we must be strong in what we have already learned about the Lord Jesus. Okay, so uh, you s notice the commitment of the early church, how they have stuck to the apostles' doctrine. And Paul is preaching almost the same kind of message that Peter preached. Doctrinally, they were very strong. So, you know, people could not come and mess up their uh, understanding of the gospel. And that's a very key thing that we see here in the ministry of um, the early church. Uh, so this was preached and it, the Jews were um, receptive and the Gentiles also were very interested. So they told uh, Paul and Barnabas, how about you come again next Sabbath and you preach to the Gentiles? Okay. Uh, so some of them, they were so convinced, it says that many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. So uh, there was a ministry right, taking place there because people accepted the gospel. And here are Paul and Barnabas uh, after people accept. What should we do? Should we just leave them? Okay, everybody has given decision card. Wonderful. We had a great uh, crusade uh, in uh, this particular city. Now let's pack our bags. Let's go. You know, what happens to those who sign the decision card? What happens to those who have accepted uh, the Lord Jesus in their lives? What about their journey of faith? You know, we have to be responsible for that. So what do Paul and Barnabas do? They are continuing to speak to them and they are persuading them to continue in the grace of God, meaning they're encouraging them to have a walk with God. Okay, so when believers come to know the Lord, yeah, we read about many things, right? We said, they are baptized in water, they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. But here is another aspect we can add to it. We must encourage them in the Lord. Believers need to be encouraged in the Lord. They need to know the word of God. They need to continue in the grace of God Okay, upon their lives. Okay, So on the next uh, Sabbath, just the way the people had requested, uh, you find Paul and Barnabas, they are ready to preach the gospel. But what is the the uh, the response? You know, whenever you have a good uh, program, I don't see much of it uh, these days. But uh, I remember when I was in school and college, there were different programs that would be organized in uh, palace grounds, some music concerts and, you know, some exhibitions. And there were also some Christian programs. Uh, so... Uh, uh, Attending these programs, I've noticed whenever you go for a program and it's really good, uh, the next, uh, you know, or the last date of the program or something like that, there will be so many people. You know, if the exhibition is good. You'll find like people are just thronging there, wanting to buy things before they are uh, out of stock. So. In the same way, we can see that there is an impact which Paul and Barnabas have made uh, in the uh, uh, city of Antioch, of Pisidia. So on the next Sabbath, they were only expecting the Gentiles to come. But verse 44, you read the whole city came together and Luke is writing and Luke is a physician. We know that he was quite... Um, uh, good with the details and uh, we don't expect Luke to exaggerate. So when Luke says whole city came together to hear the word of God, it's probably that uh, there was a great response, a wonderful response. Okay. And who, which uh, minister of God or which 
preacher would not like it they would love it so the whole city has come together and uh, here uh, paul and barnabas have a wonderful audience and they uh, minister but now what's happening as long as the message is being preached and it is not a threat to the surround to the existing setup people are comfortable because yeah it's a good concert go attend it you know be entertained that's it people are fine with that but now that the jews understand that people are listening multitudes are listening to the gospel of jesus christ now what if these people uh paul barnabas and the team they are trying to establish some form of a government and the people run behind them you know what will happen to our authority over them so all that confusion started among the jews so how are the jews reacting you know they are filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming they are opposing whatever paul is speaking because now the reality is before them they understood oh people are responding to these men it won't take long before they have taken over the city so we better step up so they are opposing the ministry of paul and barnabas is this something new not at all even jesus experienced so much of opposition in fact you know he was moving from place to place whenever when he saw in john you know what we are studying uh, in our other course we saw how jesus moved away because the jews were getting upset with him so instead of uh, kind of contending with him i also understood that it was get his time right so he just moved to another place so paul and barnabas are in a similar situation but uh, over here it's like an entire uh, you know like a large number of jews who are against their ministry what do you expect paul and barnabas to do what would you have done you're preaching and the and uh, you find that there are leaders in in that town they are turning against you what would you do you could just share your thoughts it's good to think along run away pack a bags oh yeah okay so that says walk away yeah walk away yeah makes sense yeah if you say if you feel that uh mm, you are not going to accomplish anything much led by the spirit you can actually move to another place where people are people are willing to listen to you true that's true yeah how about the others all right so just think about it uh they are facing opposition and similar to what you saw uh, the believers in the initial you know jerusalem church too they pray for more boldness isn't it so verse 46 we learn that paul and barnabas grew bold so they're giving it one more shot they don't leave immediately but they are becoming more bold and they are uh, you know wanting to uh, preach the gospel in a stronger way so they now say that it necessary that the word of god should be spoken to you first but reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life behold we turn to the gentiles for so god has commanded us i have set you as a light to the gentiles you should be a for salvation to the ends of the earth okay so mm, what we understand here is that they want to persuade the jews but they are speaking in a bold way and letting them know that you know what you should have listened to our message so they they are not trying to mince words or trying to please the jews by just pacify them make them feel good oh, okay okay if you don't listen it's fine it's not like that but they are being strong and they're saying you're supposed to listen because jesus came for the jews you know god's promises us are for the jews first but you're not willing to listen and there you know they are making their point clear that okay if you're not going to listen based on what uh, god's word has spoken 
Now in the Old Testament, they're quoting and they're saying, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. So they're saying, okay, fine. If you are not going to listen to us, we will just focus on the Gentiles because who were the troublemakers? Who were the opposers? They were the Jews and the Gentiles were willing to listen. So it was an easy thing uh, to decide. Paul and Barnabas decided, let's focus on those who are willing to listen. Why waste time on those who are not willing to listen? Right. So that is the approach which they had taken. So now they continue to minister to the Gentiles. And we are told when the Gentiles heard this or they heard the message, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. So, you know, it shows us uh, about how Jesus uh, talked about um, in, was it Matthew 13? Yeah, uh, he talked about the sower, right? The sower sows the seed and uh, <clears throat> the preparedness of the heart, how some people receive it quickly and then they you know, it doesn't develop any roots. But then there are those with good ground who receive the word of God and who let it nurture. Now, at the first instance, we are quite uh, clear here that they had an open heart, not like the Jews, you know, which their hearts were like the, uh, the rocks themselves. The word was not going in. So where is the question of the word growing? But the Gentiles at least had that open heart and they were glad, it says, they heard and were glad. So remember, we talked about the city of Samaria also, the impact. What, what impact will the gospel have on the cities? The city of Samaria rejoiced. There was joy in the city. Okay, when the works of God are done, when the word of God is preached, there is joy in the city. So that is the blessing that comes with the gospel over the city. Now here, <clears throat> we see that in Antioch, Pisidia, not among the Jews, but among the Gentiles, because they have a heart that is receiving the gospel, they are glad and they glorify the word of the Lord, which is being spoken to their hearts. And um, uh, so they, they received it. And uh, we also see that and as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. Now we can take this one line and we could say things like, oh, those who are appointed to eternal life, only they were chosen by God. But, you know, we've addressed this issue uh, and uh, maybe you can go back and listen to the mentoring hour. Um, many a time we have addressed that of predestination. Uh, how, uh, you know, God is not the one who decides our decision about salvation. It's a choice we have to make because we, yes, there is a sovereign God, but we have a free will. And free will is so clear in scripture. God never interfered with Adam and Eve, the choice which they made. How would he interfere with our decision of salvation? We have to choose. So uh, it's not that the Gentiles were predestined to salvation and the Jews were not, but the Gentiles made a choice to receive. So they believed and it made them glad. Uh, and they were the ones who, uh, you could say, you know, the church in Pisidia, Antioch, of Pisidia. This is the church. Who is the church? The body of believers. So there is a church there now. There's a local church there. Now, uh, we continue to read, and the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. Okay, Is there opposition to what uh, Paul and Barnabas are doing? Yes, there is. But still the work is continuing on. Have we seen this earlier? We have seen this very much in every incident where there was a challenge. We saw Peter was imprisoned. He came out. But later on, what do you see? The word is going out everywhere. So again, what Gamaliel said, right? Uh, he said that if this is God, nobody can stop it. And we see that happening. Nobody is able to stop it. Is it dependent? Uh, uh, is, is the work of God dependent only on one person or two people? You know, you don't see a Peter and a John here anymore. The completely different set of people. There is Paul, there is Barnabas. But what is the common denominator? The work of God. The work of God continues. And does God work through different people? Yes. You know, new people have come on the scene and they are ministering. But by the grace of God, by the leading of God, but God's work is continuing. So that's what we see. How beautiful. It's like a revival, right? Where nothing is able to stop. 
not even opposition is able to stop so we see that the word of the lord was being spread throughout all the region okay when this is happening you know the jews get more and more agitated they are scared now look at these people you know all this entire decade they are creating trouble persecution was happening now look at paul he was a persecutor he has become a a, a, a you know a preacher of that same truth and you know what is going to happen to our authority what is going to happen to uh, <clears throat> our position so you see here that the jews started stirring up people in the city so you see a list of people that devout prominent women chief men of the city uh, and they started raising up persecution against paul and barnabas so paul and barnabas did they walk away from the city no in this situation immediately they didn't they just came back and they um they addressed the matter with the jews in a very bold way but they walked away from the jews yes because they started ministering to those who were willing to listen okay so that's how they continued their ministry they did not waste their time on those who were hard hearted now you find that they are still in the city and the jews decide okay enough is enough these people are not leaving our city they are continuing to um, indoctrinate the gentiles over here how about we create an opposition in such a way that we throw them out of the city so we read here that they were expelled they were expelled from their region so they no longer could minister there because they have have been asked to leave okay please guys stop leave right now and they had to leave so what what do they respond with when they are expelled from the region you know we read that they shook off the dust from their feet you remember jesus said that you go to cities and you minister there if they accept you well and good you know god's power comes god's truth comes god's blessings come in that place it's beautiful but if they don't jesus also said that you shake off the dust from your feet that's an expression you know in the um jewish uh um uh, world and the times that jesus lived in it's a way of saying uh okay forget it you don't want no problem you know uh we will just move on to the next destination that god shows us and it's also a form of a uh, it's not really i don't know you could say it's somewhat like a judgment sort of a thing also to shake the dust off your feet and say okay i give up on you that kind of a thing so it's very unfortunate that uh, that city of antioch the jews brought it upon themselves where ministers of god right they shook the dust off their feet and said okay you don't want to listen don't listen you face the consequences we we have nothing to uh, we have nothing to do with it because what is the responsibility that the minister has the responsibility which the minister has is to preach the gospel did paul and barnabas fulfill their ministry they did what will god hold them accountable for their part which is to preach now the people did not listen they can't do paul and barnabas can't do anything about it so they have done what jesus taught them to do leave them leave them to their own um you know their own destiny hopefully if they change that's great for them but if they don't they face the consequences so they left to the next place so their stop was in pisidia antioch now they are moving to iconium okay they are in iconium and again you know in iconium we read the disciples were filled with joy and with the holy spirit okay so as paul and barnabas are ministering we find that you know people are being filled with joy and with the holy spirit now that's very beautiful okay because we as believers today you know we we are, are walking with the lord and the times that these believers lived in it was definitely not an easy time there is opposition there are struggles but in the midst of all that is it possible for a believer to have joy is it possible for a believer to be filled with the holy spirit yes it is uh, you could say that circumstances don't determine the joy and the 
infilling of the Holy Spirit. So we can be in very difficult times. Paul and Barnabas had opposition rising up against them. But as part of the body of believers, they too were filled with joy. They were filled with Holy Spirit. So immaterial of our circumstances as believers at all times, you know, uh, we can be filled. Remember, uh, Paul wrote that in the book of Philippians. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So every day we can be joyful in the Lord. Every day we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Whatever is happening, good things are happening, bad things are happening. Okay, doesn't matter. I still, because Jesus said, right, I'm not of this world. I am from above. So we have a life here which is from above. And we can live that life no matter what circumstance we are in, no matter what situation we are in. So this is the journey that we are noticing about Paul and Barnabas um, as a team. They have gone, uh, they have done quite extensive ministry in Antioch of Pisidia after Paphos, of, of course. And now they're going to a place called Iconium. So what are they going to do there? So we see here they went together. So team ministry. Is it possible for, um, you know, ministers of God to get along, serve together? Very much. You see that here, Paul and Barnabas. And Barnabas doesn't seem jealous of Paul at all because Paul is preaching, um, you know, and Paul, it's being called as Paul and party. Luke is addressing the team as Paul and party. And still, you know, there is that unity, there is that understanding. So what is the mindset which they carry? Kingdom mindset, a kingdom mindset. We are going to take the gospel out. We are going to, um, you know, touch regions for the gospel's sake, for the kingdom's sake. They are not thinking Paul's ministry, you know, Paul ministry, awake Paul ministries and, uh, you know, hopeful Barnabas ministries. That which ministry has to increase? That's not the question. We are going to work together. So Iconium, it says they went together. Okay. And then they went to the synagogue of the Jews. And this was a common practice. Where uh, do the preachers have an opportunity to minister? Usually the synagogues. I told you last time that they would give an opportunity to learned people to come and uh, share there. So they went to the synagogue. And there they spoke. Um, and a great multitude, again, both of Jews and of Greeks. They believed. So what is happening? Are there results for the ministry of uh, Paul and Barnabas? Actually, yes, everywhere they are going. Uh, it looks different. The results look different. But there are results. People are believing. Okay, Is everybody believing? No, even in the ministry of Jesus, there were people who did not believe. You know, they listened. They ate the, um, the bread. They ate the fish. They took the healing. They went away. There were some people who followed Jesus for some time, disciples. Later, when he was talking about, you know, my body, you will drink my, uh, you will eat my flesh, you will drink my um, blood. They said, ah, what is he talking about? I, I quit. I cannot continue with this man. So there were people, many left him. And then Jesus looked at his disciples and said, will you also leave me? You know, so it's like the response is not, you're not getting like you, do, we're not reading the whole city believed and things like that. But definitely, there were people among the crowd who believed. Okay, we we see Jesus say right that when if one sinner repents, what is going to happen? There is going to be rejoicing in heaven. That one person has turned. So God is working in every place. There are people who are believing. And here, uh, particularly in Iconium, we read great multitude, great multitude of both the Jews and the Greeks believed. Not the whole city yet, but a great multitude believed. Again, you know, you have a set of unbelieving Jews. What are they doing? They are continuing with their work of opposition. They are continuing to stir up the Gentiles. Okay. And stir up how we are told here they were poisoning the minds of the Gentiles. So they would have told them things like, ah, these people don't believe them. They are after money. They are after power. Do you know, Paul, 
Paul was one of us, and uh, uh, I don't think you know he, this message is going to last for long. Just wait and watch. He is going to change. Okay, this is all a show. These are all uh, sheep. Uh, uh, sorry, wolves in sheep's clothing. We don't know what are all the things the Jews actually told the Gentiles, but they were instigating. They were poisoning the minds of the Gentiles so that they don't believe what is being preached to them. But then, you know, what do Paul and Barnabas do? Uh, they continue to stay there. It says that they stayed a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of His grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. So the same pattern of ministry. Immediately, they're not leaving because people have believed. Now people have to be uh, discipled, uh, and not just that. We have to continue preaching because there are others, right? The laborers, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So still, work has to be done in Iconium. What if there is opposition? Okay, let it be there. Let's continue our work. That is the mindset which Paul and Barnabas are carrying right now, and they are ministering. They are ministering to the people, and their format of ministering. You know, they are staying for a long time. It says so. Obviously, comparatively compared to your Antioch of Pisidia, they stayed back longer because discipling has to be done. You remember, it was the same Paul Barnabas team in Antioch for one or entire year. One year, they are teaching the believers. They are teaching the believers. So they know the value of equipping the believers because that will bring maturity. So. They stay a long time. They talk to them. How do they talk boldly? Okay, they talk boldly. They are not afraid, even if uh, uh, rumors are going around. Jews are spreading rumors. They are poisoning the minds of the people. Paul and Barnabas have nothing to hide. It's the same message. Message is not going to change, right? About Jesus. So boldly they are speaking the message, and the way we read about the Lord Jesus. Right, the power of God was present, and again, Acts ten thirty eight, we see the Lord Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, he went about doing good works. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. So, these two were also doing the supernatural works by the Holy Spirit. So, we read about signs and wonders, and granting signs and wonders. Meaning, it's not something that these two were doing. But it is God who is working, okay, in and through Paul and Barnabas to release signs and wonders in Iconium. So they are bearing witness to all these things. So when we preach the message, you know, uh, we know that it is God who confirms the word through the work of power that He does. So when they're doing effective ministry, yes, because lives are. Uh, people are turning around for the gospel. You know, God's power is being demonstrated. Okay, and people are being equipped to stand strong in the faith for uh, the gospel. All this work is going on, and really good ministry is going on. At the same time, there is definitely opposition. So even here. In the city of Iconium, people are divided. It says so. We see that one part. Okay, they were believing in what the Jews were saying, but the other part were believing the apostles. So it was hard to, um, uh, you know, navigate through this place as well. So in every town, it's like that. The some are believing, some are creating trouble. So finally, you know, the Jews here uh, in in Iconium, they decide enough is enough. Okay, the way they got expelled, they got expelled from where? From Antioch, Pisidia. Now. There is a violent attempt, okay, which was made by both the Gentiles and the Jews with their rulers to abuse and to stone them. So earlier, we don't read about physical harm, but now these people they decide it's better to just kill these men, right? Let's harm them physically. Let's harm them. But when Paul and Barnabas came to know. That they are going to be physically harmed. That is when they leave that place. So before that, they are staying there for a long time. But they've heard that they are going to be killed. So just the way Jesus, right? Jesus said, "It's not yet my time." I think Paul and Barnabas had that understanding. This is not our time. We have more work to do. And if this place is not going to listen to us, 
let's move on to the next place so we see them fleeing fleeing means running away so they ran away to lystra and uh, derb or derby you know the different ways it's a to pronounce it so i'll just say derby okay derby cities uh, of uh, lyconia and the surrounding regions and what do they continue to do their job they are ministers of the gospel they continue to preach the gospel there so this is what we have uh, seen so far in the missionary journey of paul and barnabas okay so uh, we will continue if you all have any questions you just stop and ask okay i'll i'll just keep moving forward i i hope that's okay is that fine okay yeah let's continue so now they are in this place called lystra what happens in lystra as part of the ministry uh, obviously they are preaching the gospel uh, but they also minister to um, the needs of the people so there is a man in lystra we are told without strength he did not have strength in his feet uh, takes us back to acts 3 you know where uh, the the man at the gate beautiful he could not stand and he was crippled from his mother's womb now in lystra a similar situation there is a person crippled from his mother's womb who had never walked so the people around knew about this man now i, I don't know how how old this person was it's not mentioned here but very similar to the man at gate beautiful so this man he heard paul speaking okay uh, and when he was observing uh, paul was also observing him intently and he saw that this man had faith to be healed you you see here the um, working of the gifts of the holy spirit peter in acts 5 when he rebuked ananias and sapphira he said you have lied to the holy spirit how did he know words of knowledge okay gift of the holy spirit was activated it was working in peter when um, peter was directed to go to cornelius's house you know you go there street called straight what is that word of knowledge but now you understand here the discerning discerning of spirits discernment uh, within him we are told that paul is preaching but he is looking at this man and he senses or he discerns this man has faith to be healed okay and he goes ahead and ministers to this man and so how does he minister he says with a loud voice stand up straight on your feet and he leaped and walked okay little different from the way peter ministered peter said silver and gold i don't have but in the name of jesus you know rise up and walk i give you what i have in the name of jesus rise up and walk and by the and later you know they uh, peter said that um, it's through the name of jesus that he received strength in his feet what is happening here Pete, paul is commanding stand up straight on your feet and in response to the faith which he already had okay this miracle is taking place so this man also leaps and walks so another notable miracle in the um, book of acts takes place so what happened because of uh, acts 3 a lot of people started believing they started responding uh, and that's when you know they caught they seized peter and john what are you all doing why are you preaching about this jesus don't use his name again don't preach in that name again so we will see what happens because this man now in i uh, lystra got miraculously healed from his condition okay so it's uh, time right now let's go for a break we will come back and we will continue yeah thank you thank you